A new report from a science board at the Pentagon that paints a very scary picture of what it calls a second nuclear age, especially where countries like Iran are concerned. The report finds our ability to detect when a rogue regime decides to go for a bomb is not all that good, in part because the pathways for proliferation are expanding. Joining us now, Brett Stevens, foreign affairs columnist at the Wall Street Journal. He analyzed the report in a piece for the journal. He called it Dancing in the Nuclear Dark. Uh, I should mention we've been taking some power hits in our studio today, and we might be in the dark at any moment, but for now we will proceed on. A scary report, a uh, scary article. I want to start with your third point. You say that our ability to detect when the Iranians or anybody else, for that matter, are about to build a bomb are, are not good. No, and, and it's funny. Here you have a Pentagon report that directly contradicts something that Joe Biden said in his debate with Paul Ryan back in 2012. He said we would know. He said for sure we would have ample warning when the Iranians decide to take their nuclear industrial capabilities and sprint toward a bomb. What this report tells us is, frankly, we, wouldn't, we probably wouldn't have a clue. You know, people know about the Iraq intelligence debacle. People forget that just five years earlier, the CIA entirely missed when India decided to test nuclear weapons. Yeah, same thing happened with North Korea. Same thing happened with Pakistan. We were, we were quite surprised, weren't we? We were, we were completely surprised. Well, we, we had some advance warning with North Korea. But what's interesting about India is this is an open society. I mean, this is a society where it's not exactly like a closed case like North Korea or Iran. And there was no warning whatsoever. So this is an example of how, you know, we imagine we have perfect intelligence. That's just not true. So one of the conclusions of your article is that we are entering a second nuclear age. A lot of people, all of a sudden, a lot of nations already want the bomb. You know, it's interesting. And some of them are our allies because they're worried about the strength of our uh, nuclear umbrella, our alliance. Some of them are, are not so friendly. One of the pieces of news is that Turkey and Japan just signed a nuclear cooperation agreement. The Turks insisted in the agreement that they should have the right to enrich uranium. South Koreans are looking at reprocessing facilities. The Japanese are about to build a plant that could build 2,000 plutonium-based bombs a year. So this is, this is a world of not uh, eight or nine nuclear powers, but maybe 20 or 30 nuclear powers. It's a scary world. And for Japan, a nation, the only nation to have seen a nuclear device exploded in wartime on its soil, uh, for them to be suddenly potentially embracing nuclear um, arms is, is quite a development. I think they don't want a bomb, and there's a strong pacifist vein in sure. Japan, but they want an option. And that should scare us a bit about a world in which China and Japan already uh, having so much tension over some of these islands in the East China Sea are two nuclear powers. But the Japan, uh, Japan is covered by a defense treaty with the United States. Does this suggest that they are nervous about our abilities or our commitment? Well, you take something like the pivot, right? And there was a lot of fanfare that we were going to be pivoting to Asia, including a deployment of Marines uh, in uh, Australia. As far as I know, there's not a single ma Marine uh, in, in northern Australia. So this pivot so far has been fictional. I think there's a lot of doubt among our allies from Israel to Japan to South Korea about the strength of American security guarantees. The history of nuclear proliferation is no guide to the future, you say. Well, you know, typically nuclear states develop you know, nuclear industries, there's a, there's a process. Now you have things like the AQ Khan network, the shadowy networks of nuclear uh, proliferators. You had the case of North Korea building a nuclear reactor in Syria, financed by the Iranians. There are all these pathways toward nuclear proliferation, offshoring countries that are offshoring their nuclear proliferation. Look, there's some speculation that Iran tested a bomb in North Korea. And we know the North Koreans have the technology and are desperate for cash. They would be happy to sell it to anybody who's got the money, right? And what's particularly scary is, you know, it's one thing we're talking about, you know, states selling to other states. But what's to prevent North Korea from selling nuclear technology to Hezbollah, for instance? Um, there are all these pathways kind of expanding further and further. And as it grows larger, we have less control. And as we sit here right now, what do we know about the state of the Iranian nuclear program, the nuclear weapons program that they claim not to be pursuing? Well, you know, this is one of the things you talk about, this uh, agreement that has supposedly halted their program and expanded our, in our inspections. But the Iranians still don't allow us to inspect this Parchin military facility where we believe they have been testing the, the, the triggering devices you need to actually detonate a nuclear bomb. So our intelligence there is, again, very, very uncertain. And if you look at the history of nuclear intelligence, it's the history of mistakes. We sometimes overrated mm. the, the, the capabilities of other uh, countries like Iraq, but we often underrated their capabilities. Brett Stevens from The Wall Street Journal. Scary stuff. Thanks, Brett.